I always wanted to make a movie with a cast of queer characters because I grew up without that. Um, it was just a lot of me projecting queerness onto characters <laughs> that weren't explicitly queer. You were just the shipping. The, you were just shipping them all. Just trying to see. Right. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm talking to Parker Brown, the writer and director of Hauntology, which is coming to VOD on September 17th, 2024. I'm going to talk to them right now, and while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. So, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got Parker Brennan, the writer and director of Hauntology, which is coming to VOD and digital on September 17th, 2024. It is a horror anthology that has separate stories that each have a different kind of like horror aspect, but they all relate into a larger overall story. I'm very excited to talk to you, and thanks so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. I can't wait. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So just out of curiosity, like what made you want to write this film, like write these stories out? Was there some sort of like thing in your life? Was there something other event? Maybe your hometown is really haunted. Like I'm just trying to figure mm. out like what made you want to sit down and write all this? Oh, it, it was a really fun project to develop. <laughs> um, I think the thing that I've been saying a lot is I wanted to do an anthology because I wanted to film it in segments and I knew that being like a super low budget indie filmmaker, that would be a good approach. Um, I could take my time. I wouldn't have to do 20 days of shooting at once and have a very large amount of money at once. So that was the core idea. But then when it came to the story, I always wanted to make a movie with a cast of queer characters because I grew up without that. Um, it was just a lot of me projecting queerness onto characters that weren't explicitly <laughs> queer. You were just the shipping. The, you were just shipping them all. Just trying to see, right? <laughs> like imagining, and I always related to the women characters um, a lot more. And I think that's one thing that drew me to the horror genre. Um, I it's just a genre that features a lot of women, especially you know the final girl. Um, and just the strength of overcoming adversity as a woman. So, um, yeah, I wanted to make a queer story. I do think Ohio is quite haunted. Uh, I grew up with a book called Weird Ohio, and I have it on my bookshelf over there. That's why I keep looking at it. Um, and it details like all the little local legends and strange cryptids and ghosts and just anything you can imagine. So, I don't think we're a state that's known for being haunted, but I do think a lot of people here like the spooky side of life. That's awesome. No, I, I, yeah, definitely. That 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 makes perfect sense, especially your for your first feature. It does make a lot of sense to be like, well, you know how to do a short. You've done you know several shorts, several really good shorts in the past. So now you can you know kind of <laughs> it, iterate you. that and make you know a series of shorts that also has an overarching narrative and kind of like dip your toe into feature direction that, directing that way. Yeah, it was a really good way to step into making a feature. It just felt a lot more manageable. We did have a producer who suggested to me shooting the whole anthology in like 20 days straight. And I'm so glad we didn't. Um, the pre-production was great for each segment. And um, we were able to get all these amazing cast members that might have been harder to get if we had done it all at once. Um and of course, um, there's a bit of a seasonal progression throughout the movie. You get to see like a fall, a winter, um, a summer. <laughs> and that, I mean, when else does that happen, right? That's not <laughs> very often in movies. You get a long period of time on screen. Yeah, especially for an indie movie, right? Indie movies, like you said, you got 20 days. That's what you're going to mm -hmm. you're gonna see that much. So maybe there's a freak snowstorm and maybe you can like get that. But for the most part, you're going to kind of see the same locale for the entire time. Right. So um it sounds like you always wrote this with the idea that you were going to direct uh so you know I, I assume that that was always the case did you ever have any thoughts that maybe there would be a different director taking the reins or did you always want to like you know you wrote this with the idea that this was going to become your you know your baby your project yeah it was always going to be mine and the biggest influence there may have been the great film Trick or Treat, if you've seen that one. Uh, it connects the segments of its anthology so beautifully. And it just, I couldn't stop thinking, why don't more people do that? So many anthologies are different directors and you just want to showcase, um, you know, unique and interesting stories. But if you can combine everything, it's so rewarding. So that's what I wanted to do. 
Yeah, no, definitely. It was nice to have, you know, different experiences, but then kind of an overarching narrative. And it was fun to see kind of like some aspects of the stories kind of bleed their way into the, uh, the, the full on, you know, I don't know, mm-hmm. overstory, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the full on like main characters uh, experience as well. Yeah, definitely. And I like that with Hauntology, if you rewatch it, you can catch even more connective tissue. Because on the first watch, the stories probably don't seem very related until the end. But I think there's a lot of just little little things that um, hopefully our fans will notice along the way. Little little Easter eggs to tease out of everything. Right. Uh, I did love, you know, you mentioned that you wanted to make, uh, you know, I guess a, a more queer focused anthology film i mean i think horror has been i mean correct me if i'm wrong I, you know, I've, i'm not like a horror expert but i feel like horror has been fairly accepting of queer romances and queer characters for a long time it seems like uh it, my understanding is like horror fans just kind of like like good horror so it doesn't really matter if the person's straight uh gay transgender like as long as they're you know part of the story as long as there's like good blood and good effects who cares I, th- I think we are getting a lot more of that now in the last, you know, 10 years or whatever. But, um, you know, 20th century horror, it was um, it, it was very hard to see queer characters on screen. A lot of vampire movies did it well, like The Hunger with Susan Sarandon and uh, Catherine Deneuve. But, uh, I mean, we had Psycho, which presented the killer man in a dress which was kind of hard for the trans community to see (laughs) like oh so this is like what people think being trans is i mean you know it's been a fraught relationship um with queer horror in the past but i mean now's the now's the time people are ready to see queer stories in 2024 (laughs) finally although we'll see we'll see it seems like our culture is going up and down in terms of you know progressiveness and acceptance so we'll see what happens but hopefully yeah hopefully now it is just characters yeah. on the screen gay straight trans what well, doesn't really matter like it's uh you know they're they're just the characters and the relationship is just kind of like a part of society now that's exactly what i want it, yeah it doesn't have to be all about being just queer you can live your life and have a different story and just be a queer person and i think a lot of characters on ontology are portrayed that way yeah, for sure. Now, you mentioned, you know, I agree. It seems a lot nicer to kind of manage these individual projects and, you know, your your individual cast. I can't imagine trying to, like, coordinate the logistics of, like, okay, well, now we've got the first, uh, you know, short and we got to get these people in. And, oh, no, it was delayed. And, they're you know, we have to keep them for a couple more days. But we also have this next set coming in. Uh, like, how much time did you have between filming the shorts? Was it, you know, kind of sporadic? Or did you just, did you kind of, like, set yourself individual goals and be like, okay, I'm going to film this one in the fall? This one's going to be in the winter. This mm. is going to be in, you know, spring. And God, I hope I don't have to film in summer because it's going to be awful in Ohio. It's going to be hot and humid. Like, <laughs> I... <laughs> um, Yeah, I remember the schedule. We did um, The Day Mabel Came Out of the Grave in August 2022. Then we did Witchcraft Becomes Her in October of that year. Paint and Black Lace in December. And then um, The Old Dark Cashel House and The Wraparound with Jasmine and Venus. We did that back to back for three weeks in June of 2023. And we wanted to do that back to back because of the Cashel House location was going to be featured in both stories. And we didn't really want to have to like come back and set up again at the Cashel House. It was better just to kind of get it all done at once. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. The Cashel House was really kind of like unique looking was it tough to get that place to film or did you like it, it feels like they would be very very concerned about large you know equipment mm. and a lot of people and you know activity in a house that is so like historic looking that was a huge factor in choosing the location because we looked at a lot of different houses and some of them were very interesting looking one was kind of like a castle uh, here in ohio um So there were so many possibilities, but we settled on Graham's Crossing bed and breakfast, which is the Cashel house, because the homeowner, well, for two reasons, the homeowners were fantastic. They were just open to anything I wanted to do. I don't think they ever told me no, which is like, uh, you know, if you work in film locations, that's quite rare. And um, also the interior of the house was 
pretty well prepared for us because it was designed to be kind of a Victorian experience in the modern day. So the wallpaper, the flooring, the woodwork around the house, so many details were right for our story. And we did bring in some additional set dressings, but a lot of that furniture was already in the house. Awesome. Maximize your budget, right? Like if you don't have to spend on it, don't worry about it. (laughs) Right. It was, I mean, imagine if we had to dress up that house from scratch or build a set, that would have been a very expensive segment, wouldn't it? Yeah, that that would have been, that would have been awful. Uh, (laughs) I don't know where you would have gotten all that furniture from. Um, And I also like that. So in the, the, the Mabel story, who dug that, uh, that, that pit that we eventually see was that <laughs> was that you were you out there busting your back trying to get that uh that pit dug oh my gosh um my dad has a tractor a john deere tractor that he keeps at the farmhouse there it's our family property actually that story um so he and i did a lot of prep for that segment he we built a ramp in the lake for the actor to come up out of the water without getting oh, caught wow. in the mud oh, wow. and we had to put <laughs> yeah it was and we put traction tape all over it so she wouldn't slip um we dug that pit i want i was going to have it 6 feet deep but um we talked to our stunt coordinator and um, the deepest that you can make the pit safely for the purposes we wanted to use it was only five feet. But um, yeah, my dad took the tractor out there. I dug a little bit of it and then he finished the rest. Um, and we did have two stunt doubles fall into the pit in the movie. <laughs> oh, no. um, some people were asking, you know, like, hey, did you do that digitally? Like, how did you? And I said, nope, like those ladies fell um and it was scary just you know to watch them but they're professionals and it you know there weren't any problems yeah no, that's uh that, uh you must have been holding your breath at that moment like do we have insurance for <laughs> yeah. this this, this scene <laughs> we did we yeah. did uh and I, I do love that you're like yeah you know, it's on our family farm my dad had a tractor because of course it's, it's ohio of course you got just a tractor that you have access to for your indie film that's uh, perfect his favorite thing in the world that tractor well, it seems, it seems to come in handy, so... <laughs> yeah. I did um, another movie where our production van died and the tractor had to come over and uh, pull me out of the mud and jump it and everything. <laughs> and it's, I mean, the tractor seems like it should get an IMDb credit at this point. Yeah. The, yeah, John Deere tractor. <laughs> um, now, so how did you get your cast? Had you worked with any of uh, these people before? Or did you just kind of like go on like a casting call how did you kind of assemble your you know cast it for each story like it must have been uh, like I mean, opening a present each time you're trying to get a new story started yeah the casting was really fun we started with uh, just a wish list of if we could get anybody who would it be and a few of the actors were on there we had samantha robinson um i'm a big fan of the love witch um and anna biller that filmmaker so uh, um, she was a dream. Naomi Grossman was on there. You know, we have a lot of American Horror Story fans, and she's lovely. We also had Jaden Triplett on there because one of our producers had seen her in iCarly and thought she could be great. Um, so we started with the wish list, and then our casting director um, and her assistant, they filled in the gaps. So we got um, some local talent. Um, the casting director found Zoe Luna, who's the trans witch in our witchcraft story. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm trying to think if I had worked with any of them before and I hadn't, but the one actor I always wanted to bring in was Lindsay McDowell, who's Madeline Ishii in the Cashel House story. I saw her in a web series and I was so impressed with her. I always knew I was going to cast her in Hauntology. And also um, Gil Zabarski in the Witchcraft story. um, He was involved from very early on. I saw him in a short film at a festival and I'm like, this guy is such a good actor. He's so handsome. I got to do something (laughs) with him. That's awesome. I'm gl- I love that you like had your wish list and you filled them in and then kind of like, you know, we're able to also meet new talent uh, as you kind of fill the rest of the role. That's, that's fantastic, especially for an indie film. It's always nice to like get the ones that you actually want uh, you know, involved. Yeah. Um, and Nancy Loomis, who's an iconic actor from Halloween. Uh, luckily, we got her because um, 
uh, one of the managers of our actors knew Nancy. So she wasn't um, on my list originally just because she had retired. And when we got her, that was such a dream come true. She is the best person. I adore her. I loved working with her. And it's nice that she came out of retirement after all these years. That's that's amazing. I love it. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I do I know we have limited time, so I'm going to switch to, I call it a lightning round. There's lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things in the movie. Feel free to skip any of them. I won't be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Okay, okay. All right. First question. Does your hometown, like, you know, maybe well, smaller than Ohio, like, does your hometown itself have any ghost stories? I don't think so. We do have a historic cabin in town, but no ghosts that I'm aware of. Okay. Cryptids? Do you have cryptids? Not in Gehanna, but I'm sure they're around Ohio. We have, you know, all every bridge has like a story about some cryptid or bunny man or something that is under the bridge. Yeah, or or some some Mothman, you know, iteration is, is there as well. So. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you ever seen a ghost? You know, I think so. I was at the Mansfield Reformatory prison which is open to the public it's where they filmed the Shawshank Redemption and um, I was like trying to take a photograph in a tower and I saw something strange move in front of me it actually looked like a bird and I snapped a photo and then my photo was just like a blurred like circle but oh. to my eye it looked like a more physical being and I've always wondered was that a ghost was it just my brain playing a trick I don't know I mean, you're a horror director. We'll just say it's a ghost. Just go with that. Just go with ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Uh, a lot of these stories involve, like, tragic past. Does your family have any sort of tragic past? A little bit. Um, you know, we have a lot of war veterans. Um, my great-grandfather had to run away from home because um, it was abusive for um I can't remember. I mean, <laughs> he was before my time, but, um, and I also have a side of the family that's pretty conservative and inspired like William Cashel character, <laughs> um, you know, and then I kind of identify with the Julian character who's like the trans witch. Um, and if you pay close attention in the movie, you can kind of see that Julian's connected to the Cashel family. Oh, there you go. Something, to, something to watch for when you see this movie, when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you own a top hat? I I have several um, <laughs> left over from Hauntology. One was um, a more expensive custom hat that I got off of Etsy that's really lovely. And that's in our um, Mabel segment when we see William Cashel for the first time. And then the other hats were just like cheaper duplicates I bought because we have to... <laughs> we, there's a scene where the hat catches on fire. So we had to have multiples. Yeah, you don't you want to have your like your nice hat for that. Like, that's, that's your stunt hat, <laughs> your stunt, your prop hat. <laughs> exactly. Uh one of this one of these uh stories involved uh, a famous painter. Have you ever painted anything? Are you a, a, a you know other than making movies, are you kind of like a, a, a paint artist? I don't know. I would say artist, but you're a, a director, so you're already an artist. Like are you a, a painter as well? Um you know, I did take art classes when I was younger. I love the arts. I love art history. I've just never really invested time in paint. I have painted, but it's more just for fun. I'm definitely not a May Fellner. <laughs> and we do have um, that painting behind me. Oh, I is love it. One of, it's one of the Fellners from the movie. I keep it in my room. That's awesome. So yeah, where did those paintings come from? Were those, uh, was that a local artist? Did you just have someone like paint a bunch? Or, or is that like a known artists that you then you know use their work for this for this film um i went to do a podcast in 2019 called attack of the queer wolf that was hosted by blumhouse and i met um nay beaver who's um a los angeles based artist and i checked out her instagram and just thought wow um she does like kind of a jackson pollock thing and um i just so many beautiful paintings so she's the one i asked to make the paintings um and i do appreciate um that nay is a queer black artist and then may fellner is also a queer black artist so yeah, I, I like that. That. <laughs> the poetry yeah, there i like that in real life we were able to find someone who could kind of represent what may fellner art would look like yeah no exactly and also like your film is all about representation why i have you know 
as many people involved that are representative of a wide, diverse group of people. Right. Yeah, it fits perfectly with ontology. Yeah, exactly. Uh, have you ever cast a spell? <laughs> I have. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Hopefully, um, good, I mean, good or bad. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, certainly nothing bad. I'm I'm definitely the believer that um in karma and just um if I were to put like a negative intention out there, I expect it to come back to me. So <laughs> whenever I do spell casting, it's more just um it's like have you heard of that book The Secret? Uh yeah, I've heard of, I've heard of it. <laughs> it's like that idea of if you focus your intention, it can kind of manifest. And I think that's what magic is for me. It's more just, uh, you know, maybe I'll go out in the woods, I'll light some candles, I'll meditate, I'll do, and, it, and all I'm doing is focusing on my goals and positive things that I want to have happen. Um, and for me, that's, that's casting a spell. I mean, maybe someone else would just say I'm reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, hey, whatever works, right? Whatever gets you to the goal, if that's, if, karma good intentions magic whatever as long as it's working keep doing it right mm -hmm. and it and it does um i mean a lot of the things i focus on do come true maybe not in the same way that i expected but it does seem to work so i'm into it yeah don't 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 mess with a good thing right <laughs> yeah uh and the last question is one of the stories had a character having to give up their phone how long do you think you could go without your phone <laughs> Um, excuse me, uh, our farmhouse out there where we filmed the segment about Mabel, we didn't have any, um, cell phone or internet there for years oh uh, for most of my life. So, um, anytime I went there, it was like an unplug type of situation and I kind of miss it because now we do have some connectivity there and it's like, oh, like I probably do need to answer this work email or you know, um, <laughs> I don't have an excuse anymore, but um, I I can definitely keep away from my phone if I need to. But there, it, then this anxiety creeps up like, oh, I, I need to, you know, people are waiting to hear from me. So that's the only problem. Yeah, no, for sure. That, that, I, I would like to think that I could keep away from my phone. I definitely can't. I, I'm definitely as soon as the plane lands. Sometimes maybe even before as it's coming down, I'm like on airplane mode just to see, just to see what if, if anything pops through. So right, yeah. I know we're too we're too connected in a way. But hey, thanks to technology, we're talking. So you know, good and bad. <laughs> yeah, that's the good. So the uh, the film is coming out on September seventeenth, twenty twenty four. You are out promoting the film, getting the word out, letting people know about Hauntology. But after people see this film, uh, you have any other projects that you're working on? Anything else that people can look forward to from you? Yeah, I'm going to write some new screenplays. I found an actress, um, Brandy Bodkin, who is in Cincinnati, and I think she's very talented. I'd like to write a role for her. I don't know if that'll be the next film or not, but I'm yeah, I'm in the writing phase again. And um, I do like to take my time. Um, if I'm producing it, it's okay to take years, but it also I'm open. If I get, you know, some studio emails me and says, we'd like <laughs> you to direct something. Hey, I'll meet with them. I'm ready for whatever. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that makes perfect sense. I also love you putting it out there into the universe that that's part of your magic, like putting that actor's name out there. Just, you know, just in case we'll see, we'll see what the universe holds. But I did, I did like that you are manifesting right now for your future project. <laughs> yeah um and it i've that's something now that i've worked with so many great actors on hauntology i've really seen how special it can be to collaborate so directly with an actor um i mean i want their feed i don't want them to say a single line that feels phony or stupid uh for them i'm very collaborative so uh, choosing like specific talent to work with is that's exciting to me yeah, well, that's awesome. And you can look forward to that future project sometime in the future, maybe months, maybe years, you'll see. But uh, before that, check out Hauntology coming to VOD and digital on September 17, 2024. This is writer, director, partner, Brennan. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. This was fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. That was Parker Brennan, the writer and director of Hauntology, which is coming to VOD and digital on September 17, 2024. It is a horror anthology that has separate storylines that all intermingle and do a larger horror experience. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.